Alright, what is up? Welcome back to another episode. Uh, I have shutters just everywhere, uh, so bear with me. But anyway, hello. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. I hope this, this video finds you doing adequately. Uh, welcome to the mess. I have two packages that came in. Um, I actually had three, and I'm not going to tell you what was in one of them, but I'll give you a little hint. Boom, look at that. Pretty. Um, but basically what has happened is uh, my neighbors have started receiving more of my packages and instead of you know, leaving at my doorstep, they, uh, they just kind of hide them. So then I have to do the whole porch pirate from myself. But don't worry, these are both for me. I checked before I stole them. It smells nice. All right, so here we go. We got a Pentax Program Plus and it has an infinite whining issue, so seen that all before it's unfortunately quite common in these cameras because that's just how the world works um, everything is actively choosing to spite me um, and i am taking this quite personally about to michael jordan this bitch um, anyway it's basically the same linkage as the emmy super so um and the emmy and the p30 the p3 the super program the super a the the program plus the a plus whatever like they're all the same camera they all have the similar system here so it's just a matter of taking that off and moving the parts as needed i'm not going to do that now because i got a bunch of bullshit on my desk here so i'm going to first figure out the nikon fe2 then i'm going to figure out the 645 and then i will get to this and then i have a bunch of other fun projects to spend a lot of time working on. So that's one that we got in. Cool beans, moving on. To um, this, this is just a big old package. And if memory serves, I don't know who this is from, but I think one of you watching, one of my subscribers, I, I believe I bought a thing, uh, the can nets from you, I think. And then I, 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 I called you out a little bit. To be fair, to be fair, I've called myself a moron way more often than I'll ever call anyone else a moron. Oh, my dinosaur. So, don't worry about it. Everyone's a moron, mostly me. But I think they sent me a bunch of uh, project things. Potentially, or no, no, wait, maybe, maybe that's what this is. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to reach out. Because I'm. Jesus Christ. Oh, what a chunker. Okay, yeah, I think that's. Oh my god. Oh, that's actually very sweet. Okay, I'll accept that. Um, oh my lord. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, nice. That's gnarly. Okay. Sorry, this is just, it's gonna be loud. It'll just, it'll just be loud. Okay. We're, we're working through it. We're, oh my god. Ugh. Big hair, big hair, big hair, big hair. Okay. Wow, that's, okay. I take back everything I, I said. I'm sorry. Although, I don't know, I feel like I should call people morons more often. This is yielding, oh, my, oh, what the hell? What the hell? Oh my God, what the hell? Okay, 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 okay. We have, we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to discuss. So, wow, what, first of all, what an absolute treat. Okay, what an absolute treasure. Um, to the person, I believe gentleman, that I uh, called a moron, I apologize humbly and uh, wholeheartedly as uh, you, you are definitely deserving of more credit than that. Um, I will say that I have felt like a moron more often than not working on Canonets, so it happens to the best of us. But a uh, special shout out for all of the goodies, so let's go through it. First we have this, this is a uh, Reflecta, Reflecta. I know next to nothing about these. Um, this one appears to be <clears throat> broken though, so that's awesome. Let's see. 
Okay, so the slow speed escapements do not seem to be working. The aperture is working, but the timing gears are not. That's very common in these. It's usually due to, uh, oh my goodness, um, issues with oil in the gearing mechanisms. Okay, and then you got your uh, little frame counter there, so you can pop that up to see what frame you're at. I believe this is a medium format then. I kind of like that a lot though. Uh, depth of field for, this is a built-in integrated 75 millimeter system here. So I believe that kind of translates to uh, 50 millimeter. And then you have your through the top there, which is incredibly dim and dirty and kind of looks a little moldy if I'm honest. I've definitely seen, um, oh yeah, oh buddy. <laughs> I don't know if we can get a good glimpse of how uh, tasteful that is in there, but that would be uh, mold and uh, whatchamacallit, fungus. Uh, things are among us here, but still, that's a very good find, so thank you very much. Very, very sweet. Then we got lenses. We have a Minolta 5517. These are really solid lenses. Minoltas are really easy to test, so we'll run through that quickly. Just want to make sure that the throw here is good. The focus throw is a little bit slow, but that's fine. I like to set it at 16 and then you take this here and just make sure that the blades open and close. And when the blades are closed here, you can look in and see that there's nothing on the, the, the blades themselves, no oil, residue or anything like that. Minolta glass uh, usually doesn't have as many oil eating issues as uh, cannons do for whatever reason. And then to test the actual elements themselves, I usually just hold it up to a light and kind of look around to see, like this one has some dust in it. It has some particulates on the front glass there, but overall, I mean, it's pretty clean. So that's, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty killer. Then we have the, uh, the 517. This is the more updated body style, but I gotta be honest, I prefer these. I just really like the silver piece out here and then the nice silver inlet on the top. Like, I just think that looks clean, but this definitely looks much more modern and professional. These ones, if memory serves, do have more common oiling issues on the blades. But overall, I would say that this, the elements are looking really clean. Everything's moving as it should. There might be a little bit of dust here and there, but I mean, that's that's pretty solid. And then the next one we got is, boom, a Pentax 50 F2, very standard kit lens. Uh, one of the best lenses, I think. There are some molding issues here on the front element. You might be able to kind of catch a glimpse of that. It looks like it's kind of under the glass, but let's see if we can do a little. <clears throat> I don't usually work on lenses because um, I don't have as much experience with them. That's awesome. I need to get more alcohol, uh, but I don't have as much experience with lenses. So I don't normally work on them, but I know like the, the basics. Unfortunately, a lot of lenses that I end up getting from people have, they're a little too far gone. Um, we got like mold growing in between the glass and the emulsion, and there's just no way to really get to that. So that is something that I really don't enjoy, but it happens, um, you know, life goes on. Uh, let's see, this, this is loose. The front element is loose. There's something loose. Anyway, so lens, cool. Jesus. Um, that's cool. That's good. That's done. All right, let's move on to the next thing that we got, which is, now let's talk about this. This is, oh, what are these called? It's a Soviet rangefinder, and you can tell because of the symbol here. This is like the made in East Germany sign. Some of these will actually just straight up say made in East Germany. Um, they are goofy Leica knockoffs. Um, there we go. So yeah, you got your 
film loading mechanism. Oh my god, just listen to this. <laughs> what the hell? It is the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's see if we do... Probably have to run through and test all the speeds. Of course, I'm probably doing this wrong and I'll get a comment from somebody who knows what's going on and be like, um, actually, on one of my uh, older videos, a Kiev 60 video is where I learned that you're not supposed to change the shutter speeds uh, without cocking the shutter first, or you could potentially break the camera. And that was quite literally news to me. So it sounds like it's working. Let me see if it does. Okay, that's immaculate. I'm very, very impressed by this. And this actually works perfectly because I have a video coming up I want to do about uh, range finders. And I just, I don't really have a whole lot of range finders to be honest. But anyway, that is that is this camera. I am, I, I don't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but I have seen these before. I don't have a lens for it, I don't think. I mean, pretty, pretty stinking great. So that's cool seems to work, which is always a nice feature. And then we're gonna get into this one, which is, um, in my mind, one of the more beautiful cameras ever made. This is a, a Hagi Exacta, um, kind of the same vein in my mind as like a Miranda, as these just like uniquely pretty looking cameras. This one has definitely seen better days. Um, but it does appear to kind of work. The one that I worked on a while ago was very different to this uh, as it had a much more like almost clutch driven <laughs> uh, shutter speed selector as this one has an actual uh, oh wow I don't know what just happened there it has an actual dial there but overall very interesting camera the shutter release is right here everything seems to be kind of broken on it um, Jesus It's all backwards too. You got your frame counter. Oh my God, this is this is a lot. This is kind of a lot to be honest. So yeah, this will be maybe a fun project or maybe it will never work. Either way, very beautiful camera. And if memory serves, I think this is your, oh, here we go. Prism release, I think, I think. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, look, you got the prism release here, which is kind of nice, but unfortunately, uh, what the fuck? I think you can just swap out the whole prism because the focus screen is a, an attachment onto here. But overall, the viewfinder on this is, is pretty nice. The uh, machining around it's pretty cool. And it's just a very like beautiful camera. There's just something about the form of this that I kind of enjoy. The advanced lever is really weird and backwards and I don't know how I feel about that, but very nice looking camera overall. These are German, I believe. And I had a comment not too long ago asking if I'm ever gonna go over German cameras. And I guess now I will have to. Of course, they don't recognize all the East German cameras I've gone over, but whatever. It's, just, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's just a yoke. And then finally we have this, which is possibly the most uh, valuable in terms of the camera that it is, but also least valuable in terms of its actual condition camera of the group, which is a Kodak Retina 2C, I believe. 2A, okay. Comes with this nice little leather case, which is a little bit ripped, but honestly, it's very nice. They used to have very good quality things, Kodak. It was a great time. It's nice, like very soft leather. The camera itself is in, like I said, not the best condition in the world, but, these are, if I remember correctly, they actually do go for like a little bit of money. Like people want these, which I don't blame them because it's a cool looking camera. And it's a uh, 50 F2 in this like little box body. There is issues here with the cover. So I'll have to take a peek see at that later. Uh, but you have your, I think this is your focus here. Nope, that's not it. 
That's your locking mechanism. Your focus is here. Okay, that, that makes more sense. Focus is right there. You have your shutter speeds, which uh, smooth like, uh, yeah, smooth like nails on a chalkboard. The shutter actually does work. Overall, I would say this is very impressive. Um, that's not working now. It was working. It worked that one time. I have evidence of it. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful dream. Oh, there we go. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. So that kicks down there and you have that system here. Okay. Yeah. A little gross. Uh, very gross, actually. Kind of disgusting a lot, but nothing some vinegar and alcohol can't fix. I have to say, I do really enjoy the little leather here on the advanced lever. The leather on the lever, Jesus. Um, the overall construction of this would be better if this was working properly, but that can be fixed, maybe. Or maybe not, maybe it's just broken forever. Either way, I think the, the quality of the build, to push those in and slide that down, yeah. Like this is just a really good looking thing. Um, like I said, very tiny, and it's a 50 F2. Oh, look, look at that, just just like that, kind of. Okay, good enough, <laughs> just break it. Um, yeah, see, perfect, we got ourselves a camera. So we're probably gonna need to work on the throw of the lever a little bit, and then also clean everything, and then also get this to remount to it properly, but these are like, relatively valuable cameras because they just kind of work and it's the same deal I've been talking about is like mechanical cameras just will kind of work if they're kind of taken care of and this one hasn't been like the best taken care of that's not anyone's fault these are really old cameras I'll put the year that they were released up here but they're still really nice and again Kodak just doesn't make stuff like this anymore this is the, the this is the problem I'm talking about like there's not going to be, I don't know if there's going to even be YouTube in like 50 plus years, but in 50 years, uh, there's not going to be someone out there on the internet that's going to be like, oh, I just found a Ektar H35N. This is a sweet deal. Like there's not going to be a video like that because they're not going to be here because they're going to be garbage. But these old like metal bodies, there's, there's going to be something here. Okay. So that's, I think what's happening here is the, uh, gears and stuff are just a little gummy that, that that is fixable that should be fixable but um i did a video not too long ago uh reviewing a buddy of mine's photo book i will put the link to that up here and he swears by the kodak retina 3c i believe which is a medium format system and i was looking into them for a while and they're pretty nice but this one i think is pretty special too 35 millimeter Kodak camera and the other thing I want to point out too I just think is really funny is all of your film options here are Kodak uh, camera or Kodak film that they produce so Super X infrared Kodachrome daylight Kodachrome a Pan X plus X Super X and I just think that's really funny um, there was a lot of issues way way back when because people were concerned that uh, Kodak was running a monopoly and this kind of goes to show that they're very much uh, influencing the user of these cameras to only use Kodak film. So anyway, I digress. Great camera. Very excited to get it working because this will be a very beautiful little pocket camera. And if I can get it restored enough, I think it'd be a really interesting video and also good to sell it to somebody. So I just want to say again. I apologize to the viewer who I called a moron. Thank you so very much for the lovely blessings. Uh, they messaged me on eBay saying like, oh, I'm going to send you more stuff. I was 9% concerned it was just going to be like a bunch of little snacks to eat for later. But I'm very glad it wasn't those things. I'm very glad it was these things. So thank you so much. I hope this was entertaining content going through free cameras. Um, always a big fan of that. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.